Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, April 17th. Hope everyone is doing well, staying safe and healthy. I am out on the first of my two workouts of the day, walking in Laguna Beach. And uh, on my last video that I posted, I mentioned I was gonna give a brief uh, summary of the real estate market. And also, during the week, I posted on my Instagram story, um, if anybody had any questions they wanted to ask me about the real estate market, I would address them in this video. So, let me give a start off by first giving a brief um, um, summary of where I think the market is and my experience of the market. And I think it will also address some of the questions I received during the week. So, um, presently, I have seen that the market has been somewhat put to a certain degree on pause. A pause button has been hit. Um, I don't think we've hit a rewind button yet or a stop button. I just think we've hit a pause button. And because in the past two months, it's been quite uncertain what is gonna happen and how serious the COVID-19 was gonna be. And it looks now from recent reporting um, from our president, governors around the country, uh, our local governor, that we're starting to see some daylight at the end of the tunnel. And the talk is now being reverted to plans to open up the economy to some degree in the near future. So what we've seen locally, I have not seen really any um, devaluations in the real estate prices. What I have seen though, and it's been unfortunate that you'll see with any type of you know, um, uh, negative effect of the economy, there are those people that have had one or a combination of the both, and that is highly leveraged or no cash reserves or both. And I've seen a couple of those experiences where some folks have just gotten caught with the effects of the economy with not enough capital reserves and are highly leveraged where the income stopped coming in, whether it's passive or, you know, uh, income from a, a portfolio or income from a job. And unfortunately, they've been forced to sell and had to take some lower prices just because of the distress. Other than that, I'm still seeing the same requirements for people to buy and sell houses. And that has not stopped. There's people that have sold their home and want to buy something else for the for the purposes of accommodate their growing family or it's been a relocation or they've been eyeing a certain properties of a certain perspectives and if they came on the market you know they, 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 they've been looking for it and they're executing and buying we have been selling real estate during the COVID-19 in fact we just put another property in escrow yesterday I think we've transacted maybe close to a half a dozen. And um, again, there's been no discounting of pricing on those properties. Um, and we're very fortunate. What myself and my team have been doing is we've taken the position to be very proactive during this time period of the coronavirus and the economy being shut down with the uh, shelter in place decree. Um, to hear the, the commentary out there, the nation requesting everybody to flatten the curve, which we have all certainly uh, participated in and adhered to and followed uh, with a lot of respect and very strictly. But my team, during this time period, we've decided to take upon ourselves uh, a different mantra called staying ahead of the curve. It's interesting to me that of all the agents that I have been in contact with, it seems like the great majority have also paused, maybe taken a time out or a vacation and are just waiting for the market to come back, for the restrictions to be lifted so they can go back to work. We've been staying ahead of the curve and been expanding and increasing our marketing, uh, increasing the activity we've been pouring into our listings and with our buyers. Uh, my team hired another new salesperson. I think that during these times, this is the time for 
expansion and for opportunity. So we're staying ahead of the curve and we're also getting the counseling all of our folks that we have listings with about what to be prepared for and what to do when the market is released and we can go back. Because presently we're very restricted on showing property. If a property is vacant, we have certain protocols we could go through to um, get tours. But if a property is occupied either by the owner or tenant, um, it's really to, subject to the personal comfortability of the occupants and or the people that want to see it. Do they want to go into a home that's occupied presently during this COVID-19 environment? And there's been a lot of people who don't want to do that. So we've reverted and pivoted to virtual tours, doing live either Zoom or um, FaceTime guided tours on behalf of those buyers so they can see the property, ask questions uh, as if they were touring to see if it merits them actually um, taking the time to come to no, see the property. The but if something's vacant, uh, a lot easier to show, a lot less restriction, just a little bit more hurdles to go over with. But we've been very busy showing those. And now we're counseling all the folks that we have properties listed of what we need to get prepared so that as soon as the restrictions are lifted and you know, there's some semblance of going back to normal, that we're not just starting that process, we're launching that process. We're, we're sitting and waiting and prepared for the market to come back. And that's what we call staying ahead of the curve. That's been our mindset as soon as the coronavirus and COVID-19. Um, okay, uh, time for some questions that I received. One of them is from Raphael out of Dana Point. He is uh, saying, what is your take on the state of the market? And I, and Raphael was, question was more directed regarding values. Um, I recently read a report just a few days ago. It was, put together from the perspectives of J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman Sachs. A lot of you have heard about what's called the V-curve. And if you look at the, the, the symbol or the letter V, you know, it's kind of a vertical angle down and a vertical angle up. The, the impression of that is, is that the way back up will be rather a, a steep and quick climb. Those three large financial institutions have said that what it's gonna, what they feel it's gonna look like is more of a check mark. The vertical left side of that check mark has been down and steep, as can be evidenced by the um, unemployment uh, numbers. But the check mark is more of a angled right side where they project that we will probably get back to where our economy was somewhere late third quarter of this year, early fourth quarter. The good part about it is, is that we're gonna get back to that. And that seems to be how I've, my experience has been with the residential real estate market. Again, I haven't really seen that much devaluation in the property, more of a pause, more of a wait. And, I, and then we're, and the light in the tunnel is, we're gonna see the play button push back again. If the COVID-19 pandemic was something that had no light at the end of the tunnel, and we were looking at shutting our economy down for an um, extended time number of months, into, let's say into next year, then that check mark would probably be more of a flat line, right angle, or maybe even negative and we would have some serious problems beyond the value of real estate. So I'm hopeful, it looks like our, the people, the three institutions managing trillions of personal wealth believe that we'll be back towards the end of the third quarter, first quarter, uh, for, uh, beginning of fourth quarter this year. What are you doing personally during the COVID-19 pandemic to keep yourself going, staying healthy and safe? Good question, James. Um, from the very, very beginning, I shifted my mindset to be, um, I'm gonna work on myself physically, mentally, um, and business-wise. I'm working out twice a day. I'm watching what I eat. 
Um, my goal has been to get in the best shape of my life during this time period. And I'm, I think I'm getting pretty close to getting there. Um, I'm reading a lot of material every day. I'm watching a ton of podcasts, a ton of YouTube videos. Uh, I'm reaching out phone calls and uh, Zoom sessions to other business notables that I respect and want their opinion on what's happening in our world. Uh, but I'm just trying to stay positive. I'm trying to feed everything that goes into me uh, from a, uh, that's just positive and negate and keep away all the negative uh, mindsets and negative talk. Um, I'm not saying I'm putting my head in the sand and, and just ignoring everything. I'm just using my filter to, because I know where my goals are and where I'm going to be after this is all over. Um, I'm focusing on getting there and getting there in a positive way so that, you know, everyone around me, my family, my team, my friends, it's just all positive. So that's what I'm doing. And, and it's uh, actually been a really good time of reflection to do some of these things uh, because we have the time to do it and, uh, and, and to use that time wisely. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment and hit the like button and subscribe button down below. Hope everyone has a great Friday. Uh, looks like it's going to be a, a pretty nice weekend. Stay healthy, be safe, and stay ahead of the curve.